Hi people, um, I've got a little problem here with my uh, computer monitor. Uh, as you can see here, it's a, it's a Samsung, uh, it's a Sync Master, here we go, Sync Master 2053BW. Um, so when I turn it on, uh, the, ba the backlight comes on, like, but it, the light flickers and it turns off by itself right away. I'll show you what I mean here. I'll turn it on. And there we go. So, and as you can see the, the power light is on here, but there's nothing. So I turn it off. Then I turn it on again. And same thing. There we go. Yep. Let's try again one more time. You can see it's trying to search the digital signal, but the, the backlight turns off. I actually know what's wrong with it, and I'm going to show you how to fix it. Alright people, so I've got my monitor here, and uh, basically I'll show you uh, how to open it up and uh, fix that uh, problem that I was talking about earlier. Um, I've already opened mine up, like, it's not clipped in or anything. Yeah, I'll, I'll go through the basics of how to open it up, it's pretty easy. Um, well, first of all, you're going to have to remove the base. Um, you just undo this little screw at the bottom, take off the base, pretty easy. And uh, on the metal foot here, you're going to have two plastic pieces with two screws. You just take these screws out. Take the two plastic pieces, there's two little clips at the bottom there. Pretty easy stuff again. <coughs> and uh, once you're there, uh, all you have to do is unclip the whole plastic bezels around. Uh, I use these uh, little things here. They kind of look like guitar picks, but uh, they're specifically designed to open electronic uh, parts. Like this monitor, for example or a smartphone or a video game console or whatever uh, they're pretty good um, I bought them at uh, Deal Extreme and they were pretty cheap I'll put a description I mean I'll put a link in the description for anybody that's interested in uh, looking into buying some of those they come in a little pack like this there's 10 of them if you use them pretty often they go out pretty fast because they wear out like the tips here are gonna wear out really quick and uh, that's actually good because you don't want your item to get damaged so that's why they wear out pretty fast and yeah so basically there's clips all around the bezels the bezel I mean and then you just like go around you know like wedge it in there and try and feel where the clips are and then once you hear like click then you know it's unclipped sometimes you might need to leave one of them in a particular spot and then use a second one go down a little bit and then just unclip the rest of it um, just be careful be patient it's there's no race I mean you want to do a good job right so take your time don't break anything uh, be particularly careful at the corners sometimes it can be a little difficult uh, don't pressure yourself you know take your time again so that way you're gonna do a good job and you're not gonna damage anything or you're not gonna crack your bezel or anything so that way you won't have to use tape to put it back together and it's not gonna look like crap especially if you're doing this for somebody else that's paying you to do it uh, you want to do a good job right don't use a flathead screwdriver to open it it's you're gonna break everything it's gonna it's gonna be horrible um, so aside from these uh, D clippers or whatever you want to call them. Um, you're gonna need the Phillips head screwdriver um, for this assembly. That's pretty much it, really. So, uh, yep, yeah. I'll uh, I'll show you what it looks like inside, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so before I start opening anything, um, I want to talk about three different things here um, safety and precautions 
first of all we're going to be opening an electronic part so there's going to be some sensitive electronic components in there uh, use common sense uh, unplug everything obviously no cables attached or anything you don't want to electrocute yourself um, second thing if you have any jewelry like I have a ring here remove everything uh, anything metallic on your hands uh, long necklaces whatever uh, you take everything off you don't want to touch your board with some metallic stuff and then again make a short or whatever um, third uh, static electricity uh, it's pretty obvious that electronics don't like static electricity um, so make sure you ground yourself through a grounding strap with one of those uh, legated clip on it um, you know uh, make sure you have a metallic surface around that's nearby that's grounded so you can touch it and discharge yourself from an any metallic I mean, I mean any static electricity and uh, yeah that's pretty much it and obviously I'm not responsible for anything that might happen to you if you attempt this uh, so all right so like I said I unclipped everything so the backside is not attached to anything at all so you just slide it over the metallic foot right here and that's it so there's nothing in there no cables whatever if you have a different model that has speaker integrated they it's possible that they, the speakers might be attached to the backside uh, so just be careful with that you might have some cables to unclip to remove the backside so just set that aside for now and uh, you got your power supply in here that's what we're gonna need to get to so I'm gonna remove this uh, the slide shield here it's just clipped in just watch your hands that's that could be sharp so and now you have four little connectors here for the backlight so just remove those use your nails if you have any nails otherwise uh, try not to jam any metallic stuff in there like a flathead screwdriver again uh, I don't know if you have tweezers or something like that you might use that but I mean the best thing is just grow some nails <laughs> it's the best thing you have and just put the wires aside like that also maybe take a picture so you know which color goes where I, I remember which color goes where so it's not I don't need to do that there's another small cable down there that's for your power button and everything at the bottom right here and you have a little cable here just remove the tape there we go and there's two little clips here just push those clips and then pull there we go that's it and got the power supply right here this is the board we're gonna need to get to just put it down here I'll clip the connector right there and we got three screws and we got the thing pretty much free so one little black screw here and the second one there and then you have this little bracket just pull this out. A third screw here. And there we go. That's it. Just pull it out. And you got your power supply board right there. And that's what we're going to need to get to. So I'm going to clean everything here, remove everything. So I can work on this and then uh, we'll go from there. All right, so I got my power supply out of the way and uh, that's what we need to, to work on. So, problem was uh, some capacitors 
were uh, were damaged. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. Those two capacitors right there. Let me try and focus in. It's going to hear some noise. Yeah. Can't really see that well. But basically, those two, this one here and this one here, have uh, rounded tops. And I can also see there's a, a tiny bit of liquid that leaked. Not that much. Because they still work a little bit. Because you could see the flicker. So they still work a little bit, but they're, they're damaged basically. So I, they and they need to be replaced. Um, that's the thing with capacitors. I mean, especially cheap ones. They're they're not gonna last as long as uh, quality capacitors. So they they they're gonna leak pretty fast. And uh, basically, if you have a round top on a capacitor it's either blown or about to blow and and leak electrolyte if it's flat then it's good if it's round then it's not good so what i'm gonna do i absolutely need to replace these two here and i'm gonna replace all the other ones as well just you know might as well since i'm opening it up so that's what the power supply board looks like. So I'm going to replace these two here. There's two more right there. Two right here. One here. One here. Tiny, tiny one right there. And another tiny one here. So I'm going to replace all of those. I'm going to have to desolder all of them. Uh, I'm not going to replace this big one here. Uh, those huge ones like that, they usually don't fail that much. Uh, plus they're kind of hard to find the big ones and uh, yeah I'm gonna have to desolder all these tiny capacitors and resolder some new ones and uh, that's pretty much it for this video uh, next video is gonna be desoldering all of them and uh, I'm gonna show you how to do that it can be intimidating at first if you've never done that it's actually not that difficult uh, you can uh, you can watch some videos on how to desolder electronic components and uh, yeah that's pretty much it so uh, see you uh, on the next video i'm going to desolder all these capacitors and uh, solder some new ones all right, see you next time.